You're listening to Pet World Radio, and this is the Addictive Reef Keeping with Tyler Johnson. Stay tuned for live chats, expert guests, tips and tricks, product reviews, and many more topics. Hey, welcome back to the Addictive Reef Keeping Show. I'm your host, Tyler Johnson, and tonight we get to talk to Richard Ross about cephalopods. Uh, this is actually quite unique. I don't know if a lot of people know that you can actually keep octopus in your fish tank or even cuttlefish and squid, but it is possible, and I've heard that it is kind of easy and not as hard as some people think. So if, for the people out there that don't know who Richard Ross is, he's a senior, a senior biologist at the Steinhardt Aquarium in California. He takes care of many exhibits there, even a 212,000-gallon coral reef. Uh, he even has a cephalopod breeding system at home, and he's going to share with us tonight how he does that. Um, Richard, why don't you go ahead and share with us how you got into the hobby, and what led up to your career, and uh, basically anything and everything about you. <laughs> well, thanks for having me on. Um, <laughs> I got into it I probably like everybody else. You know, my dad kept fish when I was a little kid. And uh, so we always had that stuff around. But by the time I was, uh, you know, 14 or 15, I had, you know, a room full of my own fish tanks. And uh, I, uh, by room, I mean my bedroom was full of fish tanks. And I was uh, working, you know, scrubbing tanks at the, some of the local fish stores. And uh, it just kind of went on from there. Uh, I got out of it a little bit when I got to college. And then, uh, actually, when my daughter was born, I got way back into it. I ended up being the stay-at-home dad. Uh, so one of the things I would do to keep sane with a newborn was to have my own projects going on. So I started getting back into reef tanks and breeding everything and growing coral like we couldn't do in the 80s. And, uh, you know, that just went from there. I got, uh, helped establish a local reef club, started growing a lot of coral. Uh, started working at different levels in the industry again and uh, consulted on a coral farm out in the South Pacific. That was fun. And then uh, when my daughter started going to school, uh, my wife said I should do something that uh, involves adults more often. So I started volunteering at the Steinhardt Aquarium for Matt Wandell, who uh, I knew uh, from online and, and actually in person. And uh, that turned into a job. I, I was volunteering there just when the new building was about to open and they needed uh, extra help and I got hired part-time and then just before opening of the new building, I went on a three-week vacation that had been planned for a long time figuring that that would be the end of me working at uh, the Steinhardt Aquarium because, you know, you go away just before the biggest thing that ever happened there happened, which was the opening. Uh, you probably don't get a job there. And uh, about a week into that vacation, I got an email that said they had figured out a way to make me permanent and full-time. And uh, that was that. And now I'm a senior biologist, and it's awesome. It's a great job. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Um, is there any difference with you having a hobby at home and at work at the same time? Does it drive your wife nuts? No, it, it drives me more nuts than her. <laughs> uh, you know, every, everything at home was – it's kind of designed to be as self-sufficient as possible. So it's, it's, she likes it. it. There's nothing, you know, there's nothing anymore creeping around the, there's no mad scientist going on with the show tank. Uh, in this house, uh, for the, the reef tank, all of the support equipment is under the house, actually, in a 40-inch crawl space. And then she kind of likes the, uh, the fish room, which is my, my office. I don't know what you'd call it. The secret home lab is what we call it. Uh, and she kind of likes the mad scientist part of that because she can close the door and it disappears. Uh, but for me, for me, you know, I spent I spent all day working on tanks, and then sometimes I got, I I lie to you not. Sometimes I come home and the last thing I want to do is work on my own tanks. Uh, but but usually that only lasts a day or so, and then I do what needs to be done. Yeah, I feel bad for the stuff that I put my wife through. I mean, I, I'm the same way. I have my mad scientist tanks with everything, you know, systematically, automatically turning on, and hopefully this pump works today or I'm getting the phone call or the text message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when I when I got back into it, uh, you know, 10, 12 years ago, 
I bought like an Aquarius system tank that had the um, the filtration area in the back, and I thought, great, this will be easy. And I set it up in the living room, and then as I got more and more back into it and got up to speed with the new methodology, you know, then a auto top off was added, and you know, refugium was added, and then it just started growing all over the whole living room. And, and when we moved houses, she she made it very clear that that was not to happen again. And I, and I can't really blame her. It was kind of a nightmare. So it looks prettier now. Yeah, I'm riding uh, right on thin ice as well. No more tanks at the moment. <laughs> but uh, let's uh, let's talk about cephalopods. Um, I want you to explain what a cephalopod is to everybody because I'm sure there's some people out there that just don't know what that is. It sounds weird. And uh, give me an idea how, how easy it really is to do something like this and what species you're working with. Right on. A, a cephalopod is a mollusk, so they're related to snails. And um, cephalopod being ten foot, head foot. So a cephalopod is a mollusk that has all of its limbs arranged in a ring around its mouth. That's that's kind of the defining characteristic, and the most the most common cephalopod, or at least the most the cephalopod people would most well be familiar with, would be an octopus, which has got eight legs. And then um, there's a bunch of different species of those, and then there's also cuttlefishes, which are not fishes at all. They're related to cephalopods. Well, not that they're not related. They are. Um, they're kind of like a kind of like a squid, which is something else people know about because they eat them in America at least more often than other sets. And then there's also the thing, the chambered nautilus, which is uh, has got a shell, a uh, big shell on the outside, and the animal lives inside that shell. So, yeah. And keeping them, um, keeping them, is it hard or is it easy? That's a really interesting question. Uh, what I usually say is if you can keep a reef tank, you can keep a cephalopod. Now, you know, we know keeping a reef tank isn't necessarily the easiest thing in the world, uh, but I 